Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you an easy way to do infinite scrolling using the Intersection Observer API. Now, because Intersection Observer is a browser API, this will work in any framework, even if you're not using a framework, but this being Vaughn and Tips, I'm going to use a lit-based Vaughn Fusion project to show this. So let's hop into our project and I'll show you what the problem is that we're trying to solve and how we can use the Intersection Observer API. All right, so this is our app right now. We have a simulated storefront showing different products. And when we get to the bottom of the page, we have a load more button that we can use to load more of these. And what we want to achieve is that instead of having to click on this button, uh, the page will just automatically keep loading more of these products as we scroll down. All right, so like I mentioned, I'm in a lit-based project using Vaughn Fusion. And the way this works is that we have in our component state a array of book objects. So these are all, all books. And then we map over those and display a div with the image and the book name for each of them. At the bottom, we have a button here that, when clicked, calls this.loadNext page. And next page will call our server endpoint to fetch the following page. And then it will concatenate the existing books array uh, with the next page. So we essentially just keep appending more, more books to our array. All right, so let's take a look at how we can use the Intersection Observer to observe when the button is getting close to being shown and use that to trigger the fetch of the next page so that the user doesn't have to click on the button themselves. So the first thing we need to do is create an observer. And this will be of type uh, Intersection Observer. Then let's create a constructor here where we initialize this. So we need to remember to call super, first of all, in our constructor. And then we're going to say that the observer is equal to a new intersection observer. And this takes in two things, a, a callback that gets called whenever uh, this gets triggered, and then some options. So we can inline this. We'll get a list of entries in the callback, and we'll do something with them. The reason we're getting in this array of entries is that the observer can listen to many different elements at the same time. And also it's asynchronous, meaning that it might potentially get triggered several, several times uh, in the same kind of callback. So we need to take that into consideration. Uh, in our case, we're only going to be observing one element, so it'll be slightly easier for us. But what we can do is uh, do entries. And for each entry, we'll, we'll check if the entry is intersecting, meaning that it's, it's shown. And if so, we're going to call this.loadNext page. OK, so that sets up the observer. Now, the second part of the observer is that we need to uh, tell it what element to uh, observe. In that case, we're going to be observing this button. So for that, I'm going to override the lit first updated callback. So whenever the DOM is constructed, we can go ahead and, and do something. And what I want to do, first of all, is get a handle of this button. So we can see we have an ID here. So I'm going to use a query selector to, to get a hold of it. Uh, so the button will be this dot render root dot query selector and then we'll pass in the ID here which is load button button like that and this would be slightly different depending on your framework so if you're not using a framework it would just be document query selector if you're using something like react you'd have to use a ref to get a hold of the actual element but once we do have that we need to first of all check that we were uh, successfully able to to find the element but if we do we can use that to call observer.observe and pass in the button like that. And then finally, I want to remember to unobserve this as well. So I'm going to override the disconnected callback and call super.disconnected callback first of all, and then call observer.disconnect like that. So we stop observing anything. All right, so 
what should happen now is that whenever the button is visible on the page, we will call load next page. And we can go ahead then and actually remove this this uh, initial call to load next page and, and just verify that when the button gets gets shown, we should automatically load the first page. All right, so I'm going to save that. So as you can see right now, as I keep scrolling down, you can see the button just briefly, and then we get the new content. Now it might actually be better to be a little bit more eager. So instead of waiting for the button to be all the way visible, we could actually trigger it just a little bit before. And that's something we can configure here in the intersection observer. So by default, it's observing right now the viewport here and whenever it enters that. But we can define some margins on that to extend the area that we're observing. So if we go into the uh, intersection observer uh, initialization here, we can add another object here and we can add a root margin property which is essentially looks like a CSS property so top left bottom right so we're gonna say zero pixels zero pixels let's say 200 pixels and zero pixels which means that we're extending the observed area 200 pixels below the viewport so it should trigger 200 pixels earlier than it did just a while ago so let's save that, refresh the browser, and we should now hopefully see that we don't have to scroll all the way to the button to actually fetch more. All right, so there you have it. Using Intersection Observer is a very nice and performant way of observing when things are visible in the viewport, and we can use it to trigger a call to fetch more items into our list in, in our case. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for new videos, send them my way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.